Welcome to Hockey Night in New York, where Islanders hockey always reigns supreme. Whether you were raised at the barn in Uniondale or born in the stable at Belmont, Hockey Night in New York is your home for all things Isles. Now, let's drop the puck and get this party started. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Hockey Night in New York. Welcome to the program, everyone. It is Sunday, October 13th, 2024, coming at you live from Florida Media here in Rockville Center. Big, wonderful show coming up for you tonight. Johnny Lazarus of Daily Faceoff is in-house joining us tonight, talking aisles, maybe talk a little strangers, a little NHL. Going to be a good time. Real glad to have him on the program later. My name is Sean Cuthbert. With me, as always, is Mr. Stefan Rosner. Stefan, how are you? I'm doing fantastic. Nice haircut there, man. Oh, thanks, pal. Did you actually get one or no? No, oh, but thank mind. you anyway. I take that back. Last has a fresh cut. <laughs> Kidding. He's got nice flow there. Yeah, yeah. Got the flow. Got the hat. Big program coming up. Not the greatest start for the Islanders, but, you know. Could be worse. We're starting hot here at Hockey Night New York. That's, that's all that matters. The only way is up. That's right. The only way is up. So before we dive into everything, I want to remind you all about our wonderful sponsors, starting with Main Street Board Game Cafe. Find your crowd and unplug your game at 307 Main Street in Huntington Village. We are also proud to be sponsored by the brand new Center Station Bar and Grill in Rockville Center. Catch every Islanders game with great food and drinks at 279A Sunrise Highway in Rockville Center all season long. And we're also proud to be sponsored by Razor and Kniff Attorneys at Law. Ready to fight for you. Check them out at RazorandKniff.com. That is R-A-I-S-E-R-A-N-D-K-E-N-N-I-F-F.com for a free consultation and folks if you're hanging out with us live in the chat remember hit us up for the questions in the questions brewing segment type questions brewing with your question and we will do our best to get to it later if you're on youtube and you want to make sure you get your question in do a super chat and we'll hit it up later on during questions brewing so with the pleasantries out of the way it is now time for experience points presented by main street board game cafe when we make our points about the Islanders' experience the week prior. So, Stefan, finally some NHL games, some real NHL games uh, in the past now for the New York Islanders. Didn't start off great. No. Yeah, not great. They are winless through two games, but the good news is there's 80 to go. Let's start off the top here. First game ever against the Utah Hockey Club coming to town. Uh, a little bit of a firestorm there. Lots of goals, lots of back and forth. What did you see there? Listen, I, I said on uh, Laz's show that the Islanders are not going to be boring this year. That was not a boring game. <laughs> no, no, um, it wasn't. Yeah. Obviously, they would love to hold leads twice in the third. That be was an nice. issue last year, yeah, but... Yeah. You know, it was a game where you, you saw a lot of positives. I, I think you really did. But there were also some negatives that you thought wouldn't be the case right. this year, the slower start. Now, I do want to credit Utah. They're scoring goals against everybody. They're 3-0-0 to start the year. Yeah. So it's not like the Islanders faced a really bad team out of the gate and failed. It's they almost a little better for Islander fans because the result last night at the Garden, right? That helped out yeah, a little that, bit. It does help. <laughs> right? But I, I think the Islanders are, you know, structurally, it took them a little bit to get to that. Um, the top line looked pretty good. Second line looked pretty good with Sipagov on there. okay. You know, I thought they looked well. I think the defense really struggled with breaking the puck out, and we'll talk about that in a second. I thought Varlamov was all right. Definitely could have been better, but I think the major issue where you thought the Islanders would be a lot better would be the penalty kill. They go 0 for 2, and that really killed them. glaring for me. Because, look, you know, we'll dive into the third period, but the penalty kill starting off 0 for 2 on the season is not a good look. We we know how much emphasis there was on on how bad it was last season. There was a lot of talk about Tommy Abilene coming in, having the full training camp with Patrick Waugh. It's going to be different. Now, granted, there's 80 games (laughs) left to prove that it can be different, but obviously out of the gate, not what, uh, what we or Islander fans were probably expecting in game one. And it was late in the period they allow it. Too, and that yeah, that's a great. killer. So I think for the honors, again, they they got to learn how to play the system. Practice and preseason doesn't really matter. It's what you do in the real thing. But the PK struggle, the power play had tons of chances to put that one away, and really, and they go one for six. So that that started off good. Start off good, one for one, right? But yeah, <laughs> okay. going one for six. I mean, that whole game was special teams. If the Islanders yeah. win the special team, whoever won the special team battle would win. The positive is you, that they lose that game, and then afterwards you go, we didn't play our best, we still got a point. That's a positive. And, and I want to just mention something from practice on Friday. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Accountability was a big thing. Noah Dobson had that blunder on the tying goal, but a lot of things went wrong in that play. Oliver Wallstrom stepped when he shouldn't have. Mm. Dobson got caught, things like that. And Friday's practice, at the end of practice, Walk called the whole group in, and you could hear a little bit of what he said because he's pretty loud, and he points at Dobson and goes, was that your fault? No. Scotty, was that your fault? No. And he goes, it's about we have to work as a team. So I just want to play this clip from what he said. I asked him, I said, what was the point of that conversation? This is what he had to say. All right. 
Turnovers are not just the responsibility of our Ds. It's the team. You know, if, if, if our D goes out there and they have no options, there's a good chance they're going to overhandle the puck, and there's a good chance we're going to turn over pucks. And when we play the Rangers, we had 22 turnovers. Last game, we had 42. There's a reason why we had 42 and 22 the, the game before. It's because they had options. We were, we were quick to give them an out. And, and hockey, it's a team game. So if we're not responsible, if we're not responsible, ball as forwards to get open and give our D some options, then our D might be left to dry. So we don't want that to happen. We need to protect our goalie, we need to protect our D, and that's the responsibility of our forwards to give our D options. So what I want to see is us be better as a team concept and work better together to give some out to our defensemen. If it's on the regroup, if it's on the OZP, if it's on the breakout. We need to do a better job to be available and open for our guys. That's- so that's a perfect segue to game two, where <laughs> they, you know, they lose through nothing to Dallas. If you don't score goals, it doesn't really matter. But Correct. that wasn't a huge issue. Right. Now, they mm-hmm. had a few issues. And I, I feel like, Sean, you, you, know, you watched it too, is they're getting caught in their own zone. And they look, it's chaotic at times. And the good teams, Dallas is a team that's a Stanley Cup favorite. Those teams are going to burn you, and there wasn't a lot of space. You know, the Islanders' top line really struggled yesterday, but you ask anybody, Hickey watching it, Goring, there wasn't a lot of space out there. That hurts a guy like Matthew Barzell. I think that's the carryover that fans right now are most disappointed about. Not only the penalty kill, but also getting hemmed in their own zone. That's something that was a big complaint last season as well. And look, eventually you run out of excuses, right? Oh, wait for Patrick Waugh's first training camp. Ah, it's only the first two games of the season. And I'm going to stand by that. Listen, I'm not... I'm not, you know, in the sky is falling camp where, okay, they came out slow, you know, slow out of the gate and they're, they're, you know, two losses to start the season. There's plenty of season here to go, but there was a lot of hype coming in. They pick up a guy in Duclair. Siplikov looked really good in training camp and and in preseason, it looked like these guys are going to be contributors. And again, the talk about bringing in the new, you know, the the additions to the coaching staff. And, and, and I think there was a lot of good vibes heading into that game one against Utah. And it was, and it was a good setting there at home against a new team. They already got their first win out of the way against (laughs) Chicago. Like, like the, the storyline was set for the Islanders to have a big game. And, And from the start, it looked like it was going that way. They get the first goal on the power play. Duclair, Claire gets his first goal out of the way, even though, even though it essentially just goes off a skate. But it's, a it's his first goal. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, it was all there. The narrative was there. And then all of a sudden, the, the negatives from last season start creeping back in. And that's when, as Islander fans do, say, here we go again, yep, right? Run it back. And, and I think that's the problem where, where we saw a lot of warts carry over, which I think everyone was keen to see being rubbed out of the game you know, very early here, and it hasn't happened yet. So maybe they need more time, but it, it certainly is a little discouraging to see that against an up-and-coming up team like Utah and against a, a Stanley Cup contender in Dallas. The game was there for Islanders yesterday. I mean, Brock Nelson had the puck behind Ottinger and couldn't get it to go in. They hit a couple of posts. Ottinger had a great game. Yeah, no, he had a great game. Yeah. He can't. He's a fantastic goalie. He's mm-hmm. a, that whole team's future is super bright, so many young right. guys. Mm-hmm. But the Islanders had a chance to win. They got great goaltending. They made a couple of mistakes, and like we said before, when you make a couple of mistakes against Stanley Cup contenders, they're going to burn you, and the top line really struggled. They struggled to catch passes. They struggled mm-hmm. to do anything, where the second line looked fantastic. The problem is, and Waz spoke on it, if the owner's going to win games consistently, they're going to have to run four lines, have to run three deep pairs. And Dobson, again, I don't want to harp too much on him, but it yeah. looks like a little bit of when him and Romanov were put together to start a couple years ago, where Dobson kept jumping up on the rush, and so did Romanov, and they kept getting caught. Dobson seems to be so aggressive a lot. The other day, even on the power play, jumping up to make a play at the blue line, whereas you got to read what's happening and not get caught. And the Islanders had a great coverage a lot of the time yesterday. Mm-hmm. But in game one, Dobson steps, it hurt him and wasn't paying attention and backtrapping. And yesterday, you know, he makes a couple of mistakes a little bit late. Sagan gets that puck on the opening goal and Dobson a little too late to go out there and make a play, mm-hmm. ends up screaming Varlamov. So I think for Dobson... He's got to find a way to slow the game down mentally and make the better read. And if you're if you're deciding in the heat of the moment quickly, should I be aggressive or not? I think Dobson's got to realize right now with their structure they want to play, especially in the neutral zone, the one one three. Like he just needs to maybe tend to be less aggressive because it's killed them a couple of times here. And and just to bounce off of that, let me ask you a question now. Now, granted, your D partner isn't really isn't going to be responsible for the decisions you make in right. a in a you know a fast play like that, right? And the in the ones that he made that kind of ended up in goals or, or poor plays against, right? But if this continues, if Dobson right. continues to struggle on the defensive side of the puck, 
would you consider pairing him up with Adam Pellick, splitting up the veteran pair, splitting him up with uh, Romanov and trying Pellick on the left side, Dobson on the right, and then putting Pollock with Romanov? Yeah, I mean, I think the key, and we, we spoke about it um, with, I think Compton said it, that Pellick was the key when we had him on. I agree with that. I, I think if the honor is going to win any games consistently, Pellick and Pulak got to be a pairing because their whole thing okay. is they said they want to bring the swagger back. They said they don't want to be <laughs> right. talked about as the good sound uh, bite. as an elite pairing, yeah. but they want to be when people play them going, all right, those two guys are the guys. And I think we're past that with Dobson. Dobson doesn't need... You'd like to need, think so. Shouldn't need that veteran presence by his side. He's got to mm -hmm. take the steps, especially in a contract year. Like a couple of years ago, right. when we talked to Lou, I asked Lou, I said, you know, what do you have to see from Dobson to make mm -hmm. to give him pretty much a long-term deal? And what he said was is he, he got a little more he could bring. Now, he provides the offense. 10 goals, 60 assists last year. That's fantastic. But if he's going to play big minutes, 20-plus minutes a night, play on both spots, you got to be sound defensively. And Romanov has been a guy who's been better defensively. But like you said, you're in the heat of a moment. Romanov can't cover and know yeah, what Dobson's I mean, thinking. Yeah, exactly. They just need to, him to be more confident in decisions. And if he's not confident, tend to be less aggressive. I know Wa wants them to all be aggressive, mm -hmm. but it's killing them. And it's momentum shifts. And at the end of that game there, if Dobson makes a play on Doan, the Islanders win. Right, for sure. And I guess before we move on, we could just touch on briefly some positives, right? Right. Duclair gets his first goal out of the way. Yep. Siplikov gets not only that his first goal out of the way, but a nice snipe there quick right release. from the slot. Yeah, beautiful goal. And you have JGP. He gets a shorty. Uh, I think they scored a, a goal of Second, every yep, variety, yep. right? Power play goal, shorthanded goal, uh, even strength goal. So maybe just touch on the positives there. And, and, and is that something that this team can build off of facing a tough avalanche team on, yeah. uh, on Monday? I know Sibokov had a couple mistakes, and we'll get to those, but he doesn't look out of place in a top six role. I think that was the concern was because his foot, split, foot speed matches IQ, mm. and right now his IQ is just off the charts. Every play he's making, he made a, a heads-up play yesterday in the neutral zone, so I think that's a positive, Sibokov. I think Duclair looks looks fine. I just think they struggled against a really tough Dallas team yesterday. Defense pairings need work, but I think Scott Mayfield looked incredible last night, and he's probably one of the better Islanders, his mobility things like that, and that's a guy that missed 41 games last year, and also the penalty kill growth. Game by game, if anyone thought that the Islanders were just going to snap a finger and be an elite shut, uh, not a shutdown team, but an elite team under Wah, mm. you know, we were all drinking the, whatever you call it, whatever the expression Kool -Aid. is. The Kool-Aid, right. <laughs> um, and I think people had to realize, all of us, is that it's gonna, they have to learn from their mistakes and, and grow, and I think from game one to game two, PK struggled. They addressed it, PK two for two, only allowing three shots yesterday. You'd love to see that. That's what you needed to see. I think you saw... Better play from the second line in terms of board battles. Mm -hmm. I think the third line looked solid enough. So I think there are sure positives, but the problem is they're losing games because of those negatives from last year, not new negatives. Well, it is experience points, so we got to dole some out. And I think uh, with the results that we got from the Islanders this week, maybe it's uh, on the negative side. Anybody that sticks out to you that maybe dropped a couple points, maybe dropped the level here in those first two games? Yeah, I, again, this is a guy that's been unreal for the Islanders, but right. I, I thought Hor Horvat really struggled last night. Mm -hmm. I, I would... Doc, like, 10 points. 10 points, he okay. Seemed, not that he seemed winded, but there were plays that he could have made that he just wasn't making. It's not his fault. He could get 300 points next week. But I thought, you know, <laughs> that line's really going. Okay. Of course, Barzal needs time and space, but Horvat's mm -hmm. one of those guys that doesn't need so much time and space to make plays, and they kind of needed him last night to really step up, and he struggled like the entire line did. I thought Varlamov should get some positive experience points. I didn't think okay. he was amazing in game one. Yeah, he made he some good. big saves, especially on Stan Coven in tight last night. Mm. The way he stayed with him to make a great save, those were the saves where he said, okay, if the Islanders win this game, point to those. So I thought he was much better. I'd give him a couple. i give him 25 experience points there. Okay, very good. I'm going to go minus 73.6 experience points for Noah Dobson. Okay. Uh, some tough plays there against the Utah Hockey Club. He's got to bounce back this week. And, and look, just like you mentioned, Adam Pellick, they're going to need Noah Dobson to not only be the 70-point-plus defenseman that he's grown in to be, but also he's got to clean his act up on the defensive end. So he's he's got to find another level there uh, with the experience points. That's a good one, yeah. All right, so that will do it for Experience Points presented by Main Street Board Game Cafe. Unplug your game and raise your experience at Main Street Board Game Cafe in Huntington Village on Long Island's North Shore. Games for sale and for open play, food and drink, beer and wine, fun, and friends. Bring the magic of phones down, eyes up, tabletop board games to your family. Our staff will help you find the right game from old favorites to the hottest new releases. We have everything from strategic to easy party games. Get off your screens for a night your family will remember. Looking for meetups to join? Our Magic the Gathering, Dungeons and Dragons, Lorcana, and organized play communities are welcoming for all. We also do parties and corporate events located at 307 
Main Street in Huntington Village. Go to MainSTBoardGameCafe.com for more information. Main Street Board Game Cafe. Find your crowd. Unplug your game. And with that, we're going to take a break. When we come back, Mr. Johnny Lazarus will be joining us right here in studio to talk aisles and plenty more. Thanks for hanging out with us at Hockey Night New York. We'll be right back. Islanders fans, Sunday night is Hockey Night in New York. Whether you were raised at the barn in Uniondale or born in the stable at Belmont, tune in to Hockey Night in New York. Catch us live from Floored Media in Rockville Center, Sunday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern, as we cover all things Islanders at twitch.tv slash hockey night NY. All episodes are also available on YouTube and all your favorite podcast providers. And for all you social butterflies, you can follow at Hockey Night NY on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram for all the latest updates. Hockey Night in New York, the best night of the week for any Islanders fan. Attention all artists, storytellers, and creators of all kinds. It's time to make your content stand out above the rest. And Floored Media is the place to make your visions become a reality. Maybe you want to elevate your podcast and add some video. Or turn that novel you wrote into an audiobook. Or maybe you just need the right space to produce your daily vlog. Whether you're a seasoned veteran or just starting out, Floored Media has the professional facilities, exceptional staff, and intimate atmosphere to breathe life into your creative passions at every step of the process. Did you have a nice break? Well, it's time to get back on the couch for more Islanders therapy on Hockey Night in New York. Welcome back, everybody here. Johnny Lazarus on the line in the studio. Laz, thanks so much for coming down here. I'm glad you made the train. Yes, thank you guys for having me. Uh, <laughs> it's an honor to be here in the Floor Media Studio. It's yeah. beautiful in here, by the way. Very you can't impressed. take credit for it, though. That's all. <laughs> yeah. Jay, it's all very Jay impressive Bond. setup. And I'm telling you, there's not many people I go on the LIRR for. Stefan, you're one of them. And Sean, it's great to meet you in person honor. for the first time. Yes, absolutely. Great to have you on the program. Looking forward to talk some hockey with you. Um, Long Island guy, right? Yes, correct. All right. So before uh, you start getting razzed for being a Ranger fan later on in, yep. in the segment here, I'm expecting that Islander picture to get pulled up at some point. <laughs> but <laughs> I what, forgot about that. Good <laughs> but but <laughs> what I do want to ask you is just being a Long Island guy. Stefan plays. I play myself. We played growing up. Uh, what do you make of the Long Island hockey scene now? You got guys like Charlie McAvoy making it in there. Plenty of stars. Adam Fox. Yeah. Um, just what's what's the latest? What do you think of the latest on the the up and coming stars and players and and just the scene in general uh, here on the island? Well, I'll tell you what. When I was coming up playing hockey, when I was 16, 17, a lot of my friends would leave Long Island to go play for other programs. Uh, I'll shout out Pat Maroon, who comes on our show once a week. His son Anthony actually moved to Long Island to play for the Goals. So his awesome. kids now nice. from out of town are moving to Long Island to play for the programs like the Goals, like the Junior Islanders. You know, all these different youth hockey programs that have really excelled over the past couple of years because of guys like, you know, right now James Higgins is the next right. one, right? Like he's coming from Long Island, but the McAvoys, the Foxes, Sonny Milano, Joe Duzak, who's playing in the KHL. Um, you know, there's all these guys. Shane Pinto, how can I miss him? Uh, right. Marshall Warren, you know, I got to shout out the Islander boys, but you know, wh when I was growing up, there weren't really guys that we looked up to that made it. I feel like, you know, our age groups from like the 94s to like the 2000s, 01s even mm. were the ones that kind of really made that next step for hockey on Long Island. And it's great to see younger kids now coming to our area to try to get to that next level. You mentioned Marshall Warren, so we'll start yeah. there. You didn't grow up playing with him too much, but no. you, you do know him. So just yeah. tell me about, you know. What you saw from him when you skated with him a couple of times, just getting to know him a little bit. Yeah, so I didn't know Marshall much when we were younger. Uh, I believe he's like an 01 birth year. Is, is that? They're so young now. I don't yeah, know. Some, something around there. But um, <laughs> one. So when I was around a junior in college, we had these like college summer skates at the hub um, in Syosset, like right near Syosset Bowling Alley. And uh, shout out to Andrew Wittenbeck. He's the owner of it. His kid's actually committed to Quinnipiac playing oh, very nice. in uh, Sioux Falls right now. So he's a stud yeah. of a kid. He actually used to skate out with us when he was like 10 years old, like playing the three on three, four on four summer scrimmages. And Marshall would be out there. And like most of us were in college. It was guys like me, um, Duzak, uh, Pinto was younger too. But, um, you know, Bucci, James Anderson, um, Sonny Milano, Brandon Fortunato, like all these guys that played, you know, high level hockey. And Marshall was the youngest guy out there. And he was like, so sick you know it was just so obvious this kid was going somewhere and uh at the time i think he was i don't know if he was committed when i first met him um he was probably too young but 
Yeah, I, I didn't know him so well. I've gotten to know him much more in the past two years. He's just a he's a really funny kid. Um, and I know Matt Barzell actually took him under his wing this summer. They played golf like every single day apparently. Nice. Um, and I'll shout out another good friend of mine, Sam Sternshine, who's in that professional hockey scene in Long Island. Um, they're best friends, so that's kind of how I met Marshall. Um, but he's a hell of a kid. He works his ass off, and um, super happy to see a kid from Long Island, you know, get a chance at the Islanders here. Yeah, and if you want to just let the viewers know that you, where you played college hockey so they know you're not just making this up. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I played my first like year and a half, two years at UMass and my uh, second two years at Mercyhurst. But, um, you know, it was different back then, so I had to sit out for a full year. So I really only played like three full years of college hockey, not four, which is probably better for the programs that I was at. <laughs> so speaking of juniors, though, you played in Jersey, right? Uh, so it, it was different back then. I played like technically junior hockey, uh, my junior high school for the Metro Moose and the MJHL, which I believe no longer exists. And then I played my senior high school for the Rockets, which is out of the Devil's Practice facility with like, you know, um, the guys in the summer were like the McAvoys, Conzo Abel, like all these all these last names and, and big names in Long Island at the time. Um, Ryan Hitchcock was another big one who played for Bridgeport not too long ago. He was a guy who I really thought would have a shot at the Islanders. Captain of Yale, played World Junior, like NTDP. He was unbelievable. Also a super smart kid, does a great job now in the city, so don't blame him for, uh, for hanging it up. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, but yeah, like my upbringing playing hockey in high school was kind of nuts. Like, you know, after school, go home, have a chicken parm sub from Mother Kelly's in Tyasa, and then my dad would drive me out to Brooklyn my junior year, and then senior year, I had like the last two periods of high school off. I'd get my bag, <laughs> had my license at the time, go to the train, take the train to Newark like three days a week with my hockey bag. So um, it was a grind, and then I played my like two years of like real junior hockey in the NHL out in Texas. The reason I asked about Jersey, and sorry for rambling there. on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah I was trying okay. to set myself up to ask you a <laughs> yeah, question, but it, but it's fine. Um, I pulled a Rosner there. I talked for way you too did, long. You did. You should have <laughs> cut me off the other day. <laughs> Uh, McLean, the McLean yeah, family. Kyle. You got yes. to know Kyle McLean's yeah. brother, but you got to see Kyle as a youngster, and you thought, you know, we talked the other day, you said, oh, this this kid's pretty good. So just yeah. maybe a little bit about getting to know the McLean family, being in their basement. Yeah, no, it was awesome. Um, we used to just chirp JC all the time, his brother, because he played for, like, Del Barton, and I guess there was, like, a whole thing back then of, like, Del Barton kids, like, wearing Crocs, so we'd all just, like, <laughs> chirp him for wearing Crocs, even though Crocs are cool now. Like, I would, I would wear Crocs <laughs> any day. But, um, yeah, so I think at the time... Uh, John McLean was coaching Carolina. So JC, at, JC is his older brother. JC and Kyle were living out in Jersey with their mom. And Kyle was playing like on the MJHL team at the time. So it was a little bit younger guys. I was 18. JC was 17. He's a 97 birth year. And uh, we all shared one locker room. So their team would practice and our team would practice. And like, you know, they'd play before us uh, some games here and there. So I get to watch those kids play. And then that year I was playing U18 as well because I was uncommitted. So our coach Bob Thornton and Tony Sams wanted to get me as much exposure as possible. So on the weekends, I'd play my junior games and I'd go play with the U18s. And Kyle, who was 15, was playing up with the U18s. Like, that's how good this kid was. Wow. Um, so it was, it was great to get to know him again. Like, I only really got to know him as a young kid. But uh, JC and I were pretty tight. Like, you know, my dad and, and whatever would give him, ri like the other dads would give him rides to practice and whatnot. So we always spent that time in the car. Um, and yeah, like whenever we had a game in Jersey, JC would invite us over to the house. We'd go play mini sticks in the basement, see all the cool memorabilia in the McLean house. And um, yeah, just super great kids. And obviously since Kyle's made the team, I've gotten to know him a little bit better as an adult. Um, and he's been awesome. Him and Marshall actually both came out at the Matt Martin camp and like helped out on the ice, yep. which is great. So a real full circle moment and I'm um, super happy for Kyle. He's been so well loved by Islander fans and so deservingly so because he works his balls off. That's awesome. And just to piggyback off of that, I mean, is this something you expected for Kyle making the team, getting a regular spot with the squad? Uh, <laughs> did you see that coming? Or I, I mean, I got to be honest, like I didn't follow Kyle's junior career very closely. Okay. Um, I think he played in the OHL, right? Yeah. Uh, where his brother played for Clarkson, D1. Um, had Kyle played in college, I probably would have followed more, to be honest. Gotcha. Just because I don't watch OHL games in my free time. Um, <laughs> Stuff. Stuff. But, you know, I know he had to work his ass off to get to this point, and you see it in his play, right? He's not a kid who, you know, is one of those Nepo babies because his dad played in the NHL and, like, gets an automatic Are you sure? Because people actually think that. No, he's it's not. crazy. He's not. Um, I believe he was undrafted. Right. And mm -hmm. he was expected to be drafted, so that's already something that puts a chip on your shoulder. Um, and then, you know, he gets signed in the NHL. And did, did he start his career with Charlotte? No, so he started his career with the Islanders okay. in, in Bridgeport, but he goes undrafted. He played five years of, o of the OHL with uh -huh. juniors, signs an AHL deal, and played like four years with Bridgeport. I thought he had a game in Charlotte, but maybe I mean, you're, pop, you're right. I, maybe he played for like a junior checkers maybe, or, yeah. or something. Um, but yeah, you know, I think he's earned every single second of it. And again, like, he has a lot of skill. Like, was it his first NHL goal? Was that breakaway? The breakaway out of the penalty box. Disgusting, yeah. first yeah. of all. And he doesn't really play with, not, not that he doesn't play with skill, but 
he has that ability to do so, yet he chooses to play the way he knows is going to keep him in the lineup. Right. And not every guy is willing to do that. No, that's a good point, but you actually do fl see flashes of that. When he gets that room, room sick. and he gets yeah. room for a shot, yeah. like he knows where to put the puck. Yeah, in like, Toronto, right? Yeah, first was, yeah, yeah. He was yeah, in no. Toronto on the breakaway. I think he went around backhand wall. Yeah. I was on Joseph yeah. Wall. He, yeah. he has more than one dimension to his game, mm -hmm. and I think that's why Islander fans are actually a little hopeful that the fourth line is going to be more right. than just you know a banging, checking energy yeah. type of line. But, but let's keep it on the Islanders now. Uh, obviously, you cover the league. So going into this season, you saw what they did last season. Full season of Patrick Waugh now. Where did you see the the Islanders ending up this year coming in? Well, I think I got shit on by all the Islander fans like <laughs> two months ago when I said they'd finish sixth. And again, just because like they didn't like kinda, love Anthony Duclair. Had that coming, John. Love Anthony Duclair, by the way. <laughs> got to know him a little bit personally the past like couple years. He's a great ad, but but what like is he the guy that just brings you that much higher? Like no, that guy is Sipikov. Well, no, he, he, <laughs> yeah, he <laughs> he's shown a lot of good things so far yeah. too. So I just like wasn't impressed with the Islanders, and I and I said it would benefit them more to not make the playoffs this year than it would to just be a first round exit again. Like realistically, going forward, you're going to have to have a disappointing season to make the changes you need to change or need to make. Well, you think that you yeah, you would think, <laughs> but but again, these seasons lately haven't really been that disappointing. As long as you're competitive in the NHL. The fans are happy for the most part. It's it's typically more positive than negative. So, you know, it's, it's similar to the Minnesota Wild, right? Like, well, they're, 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 they're their cap thing is, yeah, their cap <laughs> thing is totally different. But when your team is making the playoffs year after year after year, it's hard to really demand so many changes. It is. Um, and I'm forgetting the original question now, but I think my, <laughs> my official pick was them finishing fourth and making the playoffs as a wild card team. Okay. So I do have the Islanders in the playoffs, and a lot of that has to do with honestly Stefan's hype around them because I, mm. you know, I did watch two preseason games against the Rangers, and the first line looked great. Obviously, yeah. that game in the Garden was a little bit out of control. I won't give them too much shit. I think I even tweeted like, uh, what did I say? Um, honestly, I think I might have been wrong about the Islanders. And then I like retweeted it after the game, and I was like, <laughs> they're worse than I thought. You know, like, as, as a joke. Yeah. Um, nice, nice. But no, I, I'm high on that first line. Obviously, it all comes down to special teams with them. Mm -hmm. But Varlamov has looked great so far. And then Sorokin, when he gets back, you'd have to think he's better than last year. Sure. sure. And I was going to ask you just about why in general. Like, your passion, you've played for tons of coaches. When yeah. you have a guy, I mean, I don't know if you've ever played with a guy that far, but what it does to a locker. Yeah, I mean, I, I have. My, my head coach, Greg Carville, in, in uh, college at, at UMass was – you know, very demanding, obviously, uh, not like a, yeah, I, I'd say a scary guy to play for. Um, yeah, I shit my pants a couple times playing the card. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I'd be, but again, there's positives and negatives to that, right? Because you're always so fired up to play and you know, like a mistake, you're going to hear about it, right? So um, for me. That's accountability. Well, but but for me, like, listen, the, the player I was, like, you know, I, I consider myself to be a mentally strong person. As a player, I was so mentally weak. Like, if I made a mistake, that's all I was thinking about my next shift, my next three shifts. I was not one of those guys that would put it behind me. And playing for a guy like Wah, some younger guys might not be able to handle that. Like, it's just how how the game works, especially if you're a fringe roster guy because you know you're one mistake away from coming out of the lineup. So, you know, I, I would think a guy like Kyle is safe. Siplikov is a guy you can work with a little bit. I know he's not – he's like, what, 26? Yeah, 26. So he's not that young, but he's he's new in the league. Um, I'm sure Wa will communicate stuff with him. I, I don't think he's had any negative flashes so far in his first two games. Maybe, maybe that, one That one two, play, but, yeah. I still don't blame on him. Like the, the, the play Palmieri the goal, that goal. Yeah, I don't blame that on Sipikov, to be honest. Right. Um, and the Islanders really don't have that much young guys or that many young guys where that would be such an issue. Wallstrom is the one guy that comes to mind with that. That's yeah. about it. But so yeah. he's the guy you'd look at to be like, you know, if he makes a mistake, he's probably thinking Because under Trotz, same thing happened yeah. where he was in and out of the lineup where he, he wouldn't play in the third period. And then you saw when Wallstrom went out there, he was so nervous to make a mistake. And when you play nervous, like, you know, when you play nervous, you're bound to make more mistakes. Yeah. And it's human nature. And, and honestly, like, so off topic, but... I think well it's kind of no it's on Roll topic it, go it's on topic but like I think the whole iPad on the bench thing is like so bad just for your mental psyche because it's like everyone's mm. just looking at their last shift where it's like you're supposed to erase it and think about the next shift right obviously you know for power play penalty kill it helps to see like different setups and formations but you know I hate when I see a guy go to the bench and he's thinking about what he just did like Good obviously point. you know you want to see like maybe if you had the backdoor pass and shot it or if you should have passed it and whatnot but like the mentality is always think about the next shift. And I think the iPads have like... As a goalie, imagine every goalie after every oh goal ad went to the bench and was like, oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, coach, let's yeah, see let's it. See All right, let's, let's see yeah. what I did. Yeah. All right. Does that, but, make, but, that makes sense. No, no yeah, 100%. Yeah. And, and also, we'll I think it's great to even, <laughs> even put a focus on the mental side of the game because I think that's what fans forget about yeah. all the time. It's yeah. always just robots robots on the ice, right? Do your job or you suck. No yeah. personal right? life. 
And yeah, well, that too. But like, you have to think about, especially the younger guys, like you emphasized, right? Mm-hmm. You, like, you got you got these guys coming into the league, and a, they're just happy to be there, and b, you know, certain players are going to be just worried about that next mistake because yeah. that could be the reason why they don't touch the bench or they're going back to Bridgeport or they're going back to juniors or whatever it is. And and I think it's easy to forget about that where you have players that de- that are developing now. I and I key on this with like guys like Samuel Bolduc, right? You know, like we've talked about how he has the the tools to be a good defenseman in the NHL, but then he finally gets out there and he's not doing what you know he's capable of. He's yeah. making mistakes and, and now and now he's he's getting waved and he's back on the bridge. But I think it's great that you highlight that because I think it's something that's often forgotten now, in uh, fan yeah. bases around the league. Another example, Julian Goche, all the tools. Right. All the tools. Uh, he's a guy that could be a, an effective, impactful player right. in the NHL and I mm-hmm. think he just hasn't been able to find that mental stability out there. Right. May, again, maybe he hasn't been given the extra threshold and the longer leash. Mm-hmm. But uh, he's a guy I was super high on with the Rangers. Um, and I don't know where he is. I understand. The, no, I know he's yeah. the Rangers, but he's <laughs> not he's in the, the extra line. forward he's right the now. Extra yeah. Forward yeah, right so now. like yeah. a guy like him, like you throw him on the third line, maybe I'm blanking right now who the Islanders' third line is. Um, Lee, Lee Pedro, Holmstrom. Holmstrom. They're not going to take Holmstrom, but fourth line, they could put fourth him with, with Sadikis and, and McLean, yeah. speed. Big, strong guy, can kill penalties. Like, he has a sick shot. Yeah, too. Dude, like, he could shoot. Snipes. I was at a game. Might have been last year or two years ago. He scored two goals in like seven seconds or something like that. Julian Gauthier. Yeah. Yeah, yeah against, against Florida, right? Florida. Yeah. yeah. You, you weren't yeah. there, but you watched. No, I was at the game. I was at a game as a fan, and I was laughing my ass off because <laughs> Julian Gauthier scored two goals in like one shift. That I'll take funny. your word for it. My memory's still I, was, I believe him. I went with my friend Zach Tell. He invited me to the game. It's, it's nice He's to go. Name dropping people. Yeah. Yeah, he, yeah, was got, he was there. He was there. Back up. Yeah. So, so let's look at the Metro division as a whole here. Obviously, your Rangers are in there. We got the Isles. You talked about how you thought they were going to fare. Do you believe the hype in the Devils with the moves that they make over this made over the summer? You got Carolina who lost a couple of key guys and tried to supplement a little bit. Right. Who's who's the cream of the crop in the Metro, and uh, who's going to struggle to make the playoffs? Well, the cream of the crop is still the Rangers. Well, we knew that was coming. That was a layup. That I was an. Mean, we saw that, we we that, saw that last coming. night. I sure. mean, well, yeah, Jake, you, guys, you guys didn't do much that better. One. Don't you? I mean, don't, we don't work for the yeah. team. And we can blame the refs, so it's okay. <laughs> yeah, I know you wanted to talk. Right. We're going to get to the Rangers in a second. Yeah. I have some yeah, really yeah. Cool yeah. questions. Hey, I'm but- happy to talk Islanders. We don't need to talk Rangers. But I still think the Rangers, team-wise, the way they look, it's the mm. same as last year for the most part. Yeah. Like, you know, Riley Smith coming in for Jack Roslevic and Blake Wheeler. Like, maybe it's... Um, I like Smith. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, he's yeah. looked good so far. Mm-hmm. Um, and you kind of think towards the bottom of the lineup, like, you place, replace Barkley Goodrow with Sam Carrick. You know, he beat the wheels off of... Uh, so I think it was Kesselring last night. Yep. He beat the shit out of somebody. Um, you, like but, that, you like that word. What? <laughs> what word? Just Continue. Okay. Um, I just still think they're this, you know, third best power play, third best penalty kill last year. Their power play hasn't been as hot to start this season, but, like, it's not a real concern. Like, they'll find, you know, the, the I guess, hot streak again. Mm. Um, but I think they're the same team as last year. Devils have looked great. Yep. I didn't watch their game last night Cotter. against Washington. That third line has looked unbelievable. Nason, um, Cotter, and... I don't know, blah, 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 blah. Who is it? Who's the third one? Oh, fuck. Um, <laughs> he plays for the team. Tatar, maybe? Is it Tatar? <laughs> it might, it might be. be. No, Tatar's with Mercer. I haven't looked at the Devil's Death yeah. chart, so uh, I don't know. All right, all right well, now Devil's fans. Clearly, he's not too. important. So you don't watch no, the show. It's no, fine. But they, they, <laughs> you could have oh, made Nason, up a name. Nason. You could have made up a name. You said Nason. Okay. Hala, is it Hala? It might be. That sounds right. Okay. Let's run with that. But yeah, Cotter has like three or four goals already. He's a great addition. Already doing more than Alexander Holtz did. Yeah. Um, You can clip that part. (laughs) Just me fucking up. We got plenty of stuff. Uh, (laughs) But yeah, the Devils look good. Markstrom obviously is a big ad. Brendan Dillon has been a sneaky huge ad in their back end. And Mm -hmm. Seamus Casey, the two goals he scored. Oh my god. That first one. He scored basically the same exact goal last night. Far side, not near side, but disgusting. Um, And even Jonathan Kovacevic, who's another guy that I played against in college, would have never thought that kid made the NHL. Never would have thought it. Clip that. No, 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 <laughs> no, no disrespect to him. Big six foot five, right shot D. Played at Merrimack. Played in the CCHL. We talk about Kyle McLean's path. This kid's path was not clear too. He worked his ass off to get to where he is. And all credit to him in the world. I didn't mean any disrespect. <laughs> I just meant when you look at his elite right. prospects, like a Kyle McLean, those are the kids that you don't expect to make the NHL. It's just it's not that you know USHL to a premier college you know team. Um, and I love seeing guys like that make it. I think we, I think we yeah. all do. Yeah. You know, we all root for those underdog stories. Absolutely. I want to ask about the Rangers. Yeah, I guess that's so off topic there. I feel like too. By the way, Carolina yeah. will still be good. 
Islanders be good. You think Carolina's still going to be good? Philly's fun. Yeah, I do. You think they'll be good? I think Carolina's good? like... Pittsburgh, Washington on the downslope. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I okay. think, but I think Carolina's like a Boston, where you throw someone in their jersey and they just play a certain standard and, and okay. style. You're not a big fan of Bavilia on the top line with uh, Sidney Crosby leading the uh, Metro to... Uh, <laughs> Gotta be honest, I haven't watched a single... Uh, well, no, I watched them play the Rangers, but after that game, I haven't watched a single second. Well, they didn't really play against the Rangers, right? When yeah, I didn't, know, I didn't notice eight? much. I mean, but I think they beat Detroit. They yeah, I think it was like 4-2. Yeah. I didn't watch yeah. a second of that, so yeah. I don't know how they looked in that game. So, going to the Rangers there, I guess the one huge question mark right now is Igor uh, Shesterkin. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. there's contract talks, Kevin Weeks leaking stuff, things like that. You're a Ranger fan. Let's put your GM cap on. You're Chris Drury. How much are you paying Shesterkin? Knowing that you probably got his best play performance you're ever going to get from him, and it wasn't enough to get you to a cup. Ah, I... I don't know if I agree. You with think that. he could be better than he was last year in the yeah, playoffs? Yeah, I do. Okay, I do. fair. Continue. Of course you do. I do. I mean, he, he's <laughs> he's been lights out. All no, I three agree. Years. Aside from game three and four in Pittsburgh, in the first year he made the playoffs, twenty twenty two, he's been unbelievable. All right, so how and much listen, you paying him? I keep saying eleven point seven is my number because it makes him happy to be the highest paid player on the team, which he deserves to be. Like whether you agree or not, like he is their most important player. I agree. Um, and the Rangers want to keep it under 12. So that's a win-win for both sides. Gets him an extra like 5 million, I think, in the long term. Um, and obviously there's bonus money too. We saw Swamy get 23 million right. in bonuses so they can try to wait or try to find a way to work that out. I don't know how that shit works, but that's not my job. <laughs> um, so I would give him 11.7. And listen, like, again, the thing that I keep falling back on is who is this team without him? I don't know. You know, are, are we even talking about a playoff team? I know there's a lot of talent, but mm -hmm. there's a lot of talented teams who don't have goaltending that don't do well. Right. Um, so, you know, I think with a guy like him, you at least know that you have a chance to win every single night, no matter what. Because the Rangers have been outplayed, outchanced, um, you know, have looked weak at times, but the one constant is Igor Shesterkin. Is this their year, Johnny? Is this the Rangers' year? I mean... Go I, ahead, buddy. No, I, I, I picked <laughs> Dallas versus Toronto. I like Dallas my final. Toronto. Yeah, mm -hmm. I picked Toronto. I think just sometimes you got to run with narratives and with the way hockey works, like hanging on to Sheldon Keefe for so many years after losing first round, first round, first round, one second round, and then you bring in a Craig Brube, fiery coach, mm -hmm. and he's a guy who can you know get those guys. Like I know you know, the funniest thing I saw was uh, Brube wants the guys to play every game like it's game seven. Matthews, Nylander, Tavares, and Marner, zero <laughs> points in the first two games. Yeah, like game bad seven. reference there. Um, no, it's just too funny. Like sometimes the internet's just great. But, That's funny. Um, you know, I think he can get the most out of those guys, and you know, I think they had a big win last night. It might have been against Pittsburgh, actually. So, uh, was it against? It was against uh, Pittsburgh. I don't know. I don't yeah, because because uh, <laughs> no Domi idea. danced Rucker McGroarty. He went uh, right, right. But now that you brought up Toronto and the yeah. narrative, did, what did you make of the whole passing of the captaincy torch from Tavares to Matthews? You know what? It's actually something I want to get in with you guys as well after. Okay. I, I think it's fine. Like mm. it's you know, optically. You know, <laughs> poor. <laughs> it's just like it's it's obviously tough to do, mm -hmm. but you look at Toronto and you think Austin Matthews, right? Right? Like no right. one, whether he's wearing the C, the A, whatever, nothing. He's the guy. So and you have to make he, that move at some point. Wasn't he kind of supposed to end up the captain? Then he got into some when they mischief. Him? <laughs> but then he got into some mischief off the ice, and I think that remember yeah, he got. Uh, believe yeah. um it was might a, have taken his clothes over <laughs> there was a removal of an article of clothing i, I believe. Know that story. yeah but it involved maybe a police officer yeah. or something like that well, and i think they pumped the bro oh yeah look it up oh, i didn't know that and i think like they were gearing up to give him the captaincy that happened they're like all right well we got to do something about huh. this i mean I, I don't think i think this is more than just a theory i think this is like no it definitely might happened. Be the right. know, it definitely I, happened. I probably just missed it. whether yeah. or not it's the reason he got the captaincy i suppose that's debatable but like it kind of seems like it lined up that way so they're like all right i guess we'll give it the 91 we'll give it to johnny you but know? but to your point and to your point he, he was yeah. born to be the captain of this team when they not born well drafted but yeah. you knew <laughs> that he was going to be the guy i think what made it yeah. weird was that, of course, Tavares is going to be supporting them. The movie has no choice. Yeah. But that he was there and was passing the torch. So much better kid. than he was there. So much better than he was there. If he wasn't there, oh, oh for my God. For yeah. sure, but I think it made yeah. it awkward. If you're an Islander fan watching that, viewing yeah. that, not that you felt bad for him, but... <laughs> oh, you're loving it every second. <laughs> but Tavares' kids, <laughs> kids are... Frothing at the mouth. But kids are wearing Matthews jerseys with the C. I just felt like they, <laughs> yeah, Like, that's tough. It's masculine. It's tough. Now, yeah. he deserves the C, and he's yeah. their player, like you mentioned. You think about him. And Tavares is going to be a great leader where he's wearing the C or not. People mm -hmm. could knock his leadership. And he wasn't great in the media, but we all know behind the scenes and what those yeah. guys do. Even Lou. Like, everyone, you know what's on Lou, but no one knows exactly what he does to help these players night and out. So, it, w it was just weird to watch on TV Tavares' kids rocking Matthew C jerseys. Just I weird. agree.
Let so me ask you guys a question though. Yeah, go for because it. Because I had this argument for about 25 minutes at 4 a.m. during the 24 hour hockey marathon that yeah, I participated yeah. in. Okay. And I was sitting around with a bunch of Islander fans and they were saying that uh, they would welcome John Tavares back if he hmm. would want to come back and play for the Islanders because this like whole LeBron coming back to Cleveland story. Um, not that Tavares is going to win a cup with Toronto say, and then I, come back because LeBron won. Yeah, but right. how would Islander fans Tavares didn't grow up on the? All right, go ahead. Go ahead. It's a contract. It's a con there's obviously differences. Sure, but this is a contract year. I think he's obviously going to stay with Toronto and sign for less. Mm -hmm. But I'm asking Islander fans here. Let's say John Tavares wanted to sign with you on July one. Would you welcome him back? Yeah, if he's taking a discount. I mean, this team five mil. Let's say I was going to say at the deadline with the cap accrual, the Islanders will have a little over five million. It's depending where the Leafs are, they're not going to trade Tavares, obviously, if they're in a playoff race. They'll wait for free agency. I don't have an issue with it. It'd be a great story, I think, if they, like... Well, it depends it if will it be a story. It depends <laughs> That's if for sure. It need. would be. For example, let's say the Islanders don't make the playoffs. And at the deadline, they're going to sell a Brock Nelson and a Kyle Palmieri. Mm -hmm. Tavares can play wing. He's done it before. You could go get him and bring him back as your second line center if he's then again if he's making five, Nelson will probably sign back for five. They probably don't want to lose that. I don't think it would be an issue if he takes a, a discount and just the Islanders have to know though when they're signing him, he's yeah. no longer that same. He has to be a complimentary piece to whatever line he's on. Mm -hmm. He can't be the focal point. And if they know that and he signs for a discount, it would be a great story. And especially if he comes back and they find a way to win, yeah, not I mean, the cup, but just in amazing. general, like. The team's much, when he was playing here, and you correct me if I'm wrong, if he had a good night, they won. And if he had a bad night, they lost. Was he was much, unbelievable. I, was, lo I loved watching it was only him. He was a great hockey player yeah. on the island. There's yeah. full, full stop. He 100%. leaves, though, and obviously Cap plays a part. But if he had come back for this team mostly, and maybe one or two guys aren't on the team next year, it won't just be about what he does. Like, he doesn't have to be the guy every mm -hmm. night where he has more support, where if he's playing a second line or third line center role or wing role, like he's, this will be the first time he's playing with talent on the island. And I think that'll help. The team be better. Well, he, he was with Barzal his rookie year. No, he wasn't. He wasn't? Barzal played on a yeah, lower lines, line. Yeah. Barzal, oh, no, 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 I, but I meant he was on the team. Oh, right, yeah, right. yeah, for his first yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, he yeah. never played with Tavares. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I think it would be really cool. Maybe Tavares is, on, is a wing spot, and they play power play or something. I think it would be cool for fans to experience that, because everyone hates Tavares because he left. Yeah. During While he was an Islander, you know, I don't think they, they didn't like the media sometimes where he was very robotic, mm -hmm. but the hate happened when he decided that he was going to leave, not when he was there. And, well, I'm and saying the welcome how. Him back? Yeah, but, like, so uh, I'll try it now. I wouldn't welcome him back. <laughs> All right. If I was an Islander fan. Fair, no, that's that's yeah. absolutely fair. And yeah, there's yeah. plenty of Islander fans that agree with you. And yeah. probably right now in the chat are giving him Well, shit. that was my argument. I was like, <laughs> well, he just said. I wouldn't welcome him back. So yeah. so here's my, my take on the whole thing, right? Like, like I'm over that whole situation. Right. You know what I mean? Like, And I don't think I was ever like like firmly as bitter as the majority of the fan base was like I had my things to say I don't think he handled it the right way at all. I Correct. think I think it was awful. The I way still don't he know it. what else he's supposed to do though. Well, that's he's not going to say. I mean, that's, all, that's another yeah, half hour leaving. show. Yeah, I plan on leaving. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, anyway, we can't dive in there. But the bottom line for me is like I still just love reveling in his failure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Like that's and fair Toronto's core and Toronto's failure, and that goes back to 2002 uh, when they played the seven game yeah, series yeah. with pa Peter Laviolette as yeah, the head coach, yeah. and he was a rookie and amazing series and. And the, there was the Shane Corson stuff and the Darcy Tucker stuff. Like, like that's carryover for me. So, so it made it just even easier for me to loathe Toronto <laughs> yeah, yeah. when John did this, when Tavares did this with, with the Leafs. Yeah, yeah, sure, <laughs> totally. But, um, but so like I just love it when they fail. Like I, the first round exits and the and, and all that stuff. Like I'm just like this is this is fantastic. You know, I love it all the time. Fair enough. So, but to get to your question, something I really haven't thought about. Yeah. Like I think at the end of the day, like. You know, I mean, it would be so, the press conference would be amazing, you know, <laughs> just, to, just to see all that. Like, it's not going to happen. I, I highly doubt it's right. gonna, it would happen. Like, let's say if he goes It's not going to happen. It, let's just say <laughs> him not, and, him no and the Leafs, they don't come, don't come yeah. to an agreement and the speculation is there. Like, I don't think there's any chance that he comes back to the island, maybe even on his side. Like, he probably wants nothing to do with it. You oh, know? there's. I don't think there's but, any way he wants to come Right. Yeah. But either way, like, I personally would be like, yeah, under the right circumstances, kind of as Stefan said, like, Fine. If if he's the missing piece, he's not. He's he's a piece. he's a piece. Right. If he's a piece that's going to help this team get a little further short. I mean, he was the piece back that's then. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like I want to know that timeline. Yeah. You know, if he had a stuck around and the the beginning of the dawn of the Barry Trotz era, like what could have been? Because right. they were. We always talked about how much offense that they were missing. You know, they got through on their D and their goaltending, but they just never had enough firepower. If the dude had just stayed, we might have been having a parade down Hempstead Turnpike. Maybe, maybe not. 
But you know that it never happened, and and you know I think I think a good portion of the fan base has let it fade. But there's a, definitely a strong part of the fan base yeah. that doesn't want anything to do with him, and I do not blame them because I personally think he handled it awfully because he talked out of both sides of his mouth. Of his right. mouth. But we can't get back into that. He needed, yeah. he needed, too much show. Change left. the topic. He needed yeah. help. Next next index card. Yes. Uh, <laughs> next index card. I think that was it. I actually have for you. Yeah, we we got to move on. But Johnny, well, you're welcome. To, go ahead. Well, I have one thing for <laughs> I have just one thing for Islander fans. I I love the yes 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 thing. Okay, but. If you, if UBS is going to be anything close to the Coliseum, we got to fix that goal song. Oh yeah, I, I'm I'm lukewarm on the goal song. Like I'm I'm happy to change the goal song. I have been for a while. It's just so not Long Island. I don't know. Yeah, I don't I don't know. I like, miss the old school like the Coliseum. I mean, they've done worse. Senna Kanopka had yeah. that Live Is Life song. You remember yeah. that? That was terrible. Oasis? Is that o no, Oasis? no. I forget or the name of the group. They were like uh, a '70s or '80s group, whatever it was. Yeah. But it wasn't a good song. Yeah. Suffice it to say. No, I agree with you. They Osiris? could do better with the. Is it Osiris? the goal song. I don't know. Yeah, life is life. Something like that. <laughs> Opus. But mm. but anyway, yeah. we're we're getting late into the hour here. But Johnny, you're welcome to stick around. This we got more yes. segments to come. Appreciate you being here. Uh, that was great stuff from you. But we're gonna take a break. So folks, thank you so much for hanging out with us here at Hockey Night in New York. Hit us up for the questions on questions brewing later. We're gonna take a break. We'll be right back. Islanders fans, Sunday night is Hockey Night in New York. Whether you were raised at the barn in Uniondale or born in the stable at Belmont, tune in to Hockey Night in New York. Catch us live from Floored Media in Rockville Center, Sunday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern, as we cover all things Islanders at twitch.tv slash hockey night NY. All episodes are also available on YouTube and all your favorite podcast providers. And for all you social butterflies, you can follow at Hockey Night NY on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram for all the latest updates. Hockey Night in New York, the best night of the week for any Islanders fan. Thanks for giving some time to our sponsors. Ready to talk more aisles? The train rolls on right here on Hockey Night in New York. Now that I'm looking at the right camera, the train does roll on here at Hockey Night in New York, right into Center Station in Rockville Center, Center Station Bar and Grill. Great place to catch a game, great place to catch a bite and to drink, but it's time for what's on tap. So the Islanders have three games on the docket this week. Monday, they go into Colorado to play the Avalanche at 9 o'clock Eastern time. Thursday, they go into St. Louis to play the Blues, and Saturday, they come back home to play the Montreal Canadiens at 7 p.m. on Saturday. Let's start against the Avs. Stefan, we'll start with you, and then uh, we'll get, get a take from you, Johnny. Yeah, I mean, it's a special day for <laughs> Avalanche fans. Yes, that's uh, right. Patrick Waugh's return for the first time since he kind of quit on them. That summer in 2016. <laughs> he, did, he did quit. Uh, we obviously found out later that he wanted to say in the roster construction. Sackick said no, and they went on their way. But obviously he was a player there, won two cups there, won a con Smythe there. So this is going to be really awesome for him to be back in the building. He's not a guy that ever gets caught up in it. I think also a second part of that is he's returning with Varlamov. That year right. that they went from being last in the league to first in their division, second in the West. Varlamov was a Vezina runner-up. Runner he had a great year. I think he was fourth in heart voting. So it'll be a really cool experience for them to be back. Watt doesn't carry wants the honors to get a win, but it's an avalanche team that knows how to score goals. But, and we'll ask last about this, Georgiev is like Swiss cheese. Pulled in his mm. first two starts of the year. And if you're the Islanders, you got to find a way to get shots. Matthew Barzal can't have one shot on goal like he had last night. You pretty much have to shoot from everywhere and hope that percentages play out and he allows four or five. There you go, Johnny. I don't think he'll start. Do you think he'll That's start true. in that game? Maybe not. Yeah, yeah I don't not. think they start with him at all after the first two performances. But, you know, with Colorado, too, you also have to possess the puck. Right. Because if you let Nathan McKinnon, Miko Rantan, <laughs> and Cal McCarr skate around, you're not going to get the chance to shoot. So I think that's the biggest thing for them. But Colorado is one of those weird teams this year. I, I wasn't very high on them in my, in my mm -hmm. preseason prediction um, just because their depth is not what it used to be. And uh, even their blue line, I feel like, is not as strong as it was two years ago. Obviously, you have that great first pair of McCarr and Taves. But uh, there, there is a decent drop-off, I think, in the next two pairs. So, um, you know, Manson's still pretty good in the second pair. And I think Gerard is paired with him. Yep. I might be wrong. I'm going to have to check dailyfaceoff.com there for the line <laughs> chart. Uh, but the Islanders can go in there and easily steal two points with how Colorado started. Well, I'll tell you what. There's kind of a mandate on them to do that now after the way they started. I yeah. mean, you don't want to start three games into the hole. Sure, they got a point against Utah. But you don't want to go three three games down here. And, and Colorado's still going to be a tough team. They still have the firepower, like you mentioned. But mm -hmm. I think this is a game where the, the Islanders got to take. They got to come out on fire. This yeah. can't be where you're in the... Th like, 
against Dallas, their best period of the season was the third period. They didn't score, but they played wah hockey. You got to play wah hockey from opening puck drop or you're in trouble. Like he said, you, you wait around and allow Avalanche to skate around you, you're done. On the flip side, too, though, Colorado just got beat at home by Columbus. They're going to come out buzzing. Yeah. It's yeah. not good for the Islanders. Yeah. So just, just for that purpose, like they're going to come out pretty hot. Yeah, no, I can't argue with that. All right, let's move on to St. Louis. This is a, a mushy middle team for yeah. me. We talked about yeah. that a little bit before the show. A uh, team who I thought was on the decline, but kind of is hanging around in the middle there. They got some good young players. But, uh, Stefan, what do you got on St. Louis? Yeah, I feel like uh, for a lot of these teams, they're fast. These young kids, mm-hmm. their speed and skill. Kairou's filthy. They got a couple of guys this summer, too, from Edmonton, right? They make moves. They got. They have two brothers. I think the... Um, with the the Pierre the Joseph brothers Joseph are both brothers. on their team, yeah. and for as much as I don't like the way Binnington acts, you in love goal, him. <laughs> you could be cocky it. when you're good. <laughs> I'm all for it. <laughs> yeah, I, I think um, he's a rock. You know, he mm. could steal you games a lot of the times, and he's played the Islanders for. He did shoulder Sorokin a couple of years ago in between. Oh, yeah. There's some oh, history yeah. with this team, mm-hmm. and there's Leander Gordie out hat trick. I think when they were in St. Louis a couple of years ago, or maybe it was last year. But yeah, this is a Blues team where you don't really know what they're gonna be. Mm-hmm. But it, these players aren't looking at it as we're going to be a bad team. Like they're ready to go. They're out of the gate. They got some young talent. But Laz, a little maybe more on that. I had them finishing eighth in the Central this yeah. year, below Chicago. Damn. Um, okay. I just below think Chicago. Yeah, I just think their decor wow. is really slow, and obviously losing, losing Tory Krug right. for the full year is a mm-hmm. big loss. But their mm-hmm. back end, it's a little bit older, and guys like Preco and guys like you know Ryan Suter back there. Even though Suter has right, scored Suter. a goal this year, yeah. um, but I look at that team and I just kind of think like they're in this weird, um, similar to the Islanders. Like they have some young talent, but they have a lot of older core guys that right. were there mm-hmm. when they won mm-hmm. the cup. Um, granted, it's not like the same team when they won the cup, but um, some you know leftover pieces, I guess, would be the word. I think the Islanders win that game. Um, obviously, it's a little bit more in advance this week. but I think that if that's a game the Islanders drop, that's when yeah. I think uh, the alarm People bells start, taking start to the go panic off. Yeah. Out of the yeah, I think that's hoping fair. Better hope that night. <laughs> What's that? You better hope the Mets win that night. Or Twitter will be all over the Islanders. <laughs> right. And speaking of the Mets, Jake, how they th- where'd he go? Jake, how the Mets doing, pal? Oh, oh, sorry, buddy. Oh, so sorry. tune in talk sorry, tonight pal. in New York yeah. if you're not. Put the focus back on Dobson. <laughs> sorry, pal. All right, moving on to Saturday. The Montreal Canadiens come to town. This is another team that's probably on the lower end of the Eastern Conference, but a lot of young guys. Marty St. Louis behind the bench. Uh, is this a team finally on the rise heading up the standings, or they got a long way to go? You feel bad for Patrick Line. I think that's the first thing yeah. you think of yeah, with the Canadians yeah. is mm-hmm. you root for, you know, he was in the players program. Um, he was trying to work his way back from that, he had, and then he gets hurt in preseason and he's out for what six days it's gonna be a long time he's not gonna come back right. to the end yeah, of the year that's rough but out of the gates cole caulfield's on a mission yeah. i mean the guy's a sniper we knew that he's a small guy but he's he could fit into those little tight corners His Sam, goal last night was disgusting disgusting and and he's caught not cocky but he's yeah i just he's that. the best yeah. he's the best I it's great he doesn't go yeah. too nuts but he knows when he scored a nice goal and then sam montebro in goal wow Montem he's Brodeur. he Mar, 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 he's been a brick. That's good. He's That's been good. a brick wall. I actually just came up. I like that. Yeah, copyright trademark that. Um, pretty yeah. much for yeah, Montreal, that. it was goaltending. Uh, you know, Allen was there, yeah. and it was just always a revolving door since Price left and that cup run. Mm. And Sam Montrose had a chance to be that guy now for a little bit, and and he looks phenomenal. If they're going to do anything and stay in the race. He's going to have to play a huge part. So for the Islanders, with, with a lot of goaltending, especially goalies that are hot now, you got to get traffic. you got to make him get off his game. And I think, you know, depending on how the Islanders do this week, you're back at home. You had a really bad performance at home to start the year. You got the road trip out of the way. You got to mingle as a team and go out to dinners and things sure, like that. So yeah. Duclair Hang spoke hotel, about. Play some cards. But now you're back, and Waz made it such a focal point. Like, we have to do what we can for the fans. They're paying. So you got to come back. And even if Montreal is playing well, you got to show them that you know we are a better team than you. you, you maybe this, you know, this, you're playing hot now, but it'll balance out. You're probably not going to be in a playoff spot where the Islanders hope they're going to be, and you got to show them which team is the better team that night. So, how do the Islanders do this week? I'll throw this at both of you. I think I think they two one and zero. I do think it's going to no like, overtime losses. Pff, good one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> two, good one, Steph. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think Colorado, like he said, they just got. Killed at home. Yeah, Columbus beat them. Mm-hmm. They, they're going to come out firing, and the Islanders haven't proved that they're going to come out hot. And You're, the Utah was fair. a fast team. Dallas wasn't super fast, but Dallas mm-hmm. talented. Where it just took the Islanders too long. And I think they could still play a really good game against Colorado. Maybe it goes to overtime, but I just until the Islanders prove they're going to start on time and be ready to go and play their game. Mm-hmm. Those really, really good teams are going to give them a hard time. I think St. Louis, they win. I think at home, they win. But I think I think Colorado is going to be a tough one. Then again, they could surprise you and beat Colorado, beat St. Louis, and fall to Montreal. We've that seen that would be very before. Islanders. Absolutely. Johnny, what do you got? I'm actually going to say 1-1-1. One, one, one. Okay. I think, I think they play a good game, but not good enough against Colorado. Just 
obviously, like we said too, Colorado has to make up for that last game against mm-hmm. Columbus. Mm-hmm. I think they're going to have a disappointing game in St. Louis. Okay. But then they'll come back at home and win in front of the fans. All right, I'm going to be Shawnee Optimist. I'm going to go 2-0-1. <laughs> you going to go 3 No, no, I'm going 2-0-1. You need gonna, the overtime loss. They're going to the OT loss to Colorado. Okay. And uh, then I think they take they take St. Louis and Montreal. I, I actually had my St. Louis game as the overtime game, by the way. Okay. Overtime loss to St. Louis. That would be unfortunate, but yeah. y- you can't put it past them. But you get the it point. It could happen. I was going to say, po- you get the point. Look <laughs> on the bright really side. Big, yeah. yeah. All right, so that's going to do it for What's on Tap, presented by Center Station Bar and Grill. Catch great food, drinks, Islanders games, and live entertainment at 279A Sunrise Highway in Rockville Center. And now we move on to the hero of the week. Ah, yes. Much better. (laughs) (laughs) Blaring in our eardrums last week. All right, folks, time for Hero of the Week, where we pick a hero of the week. (laughs) <laughs> Stefan, what do you got? Yeah, this is going to be, people are going to go nuts probably on this, but my hero is Oliver Wallstrom, and let me explain why. Tell us why. How many years have gone by where we kept saying, Wallstrom can't play a bottom six role because he doesn't understand what's being asked of him. You know, okay. Systems under trot, system under lane, Patrick Waugh's system last year in a nine-game sample, he just wasn't getting it. And through two games, sure, has he had, you know, he makes the mistake on the one that they, uh, the don't goal that ties it up against Utah. And he's made his mistakes, but... More often than not, when you look up in the defensive zone, he's in the right spots. Um, he has a hit, a takeaway, two blocks against Utah. Had a takeaway last night against Dallas. But also, when he has the puck in the neutral zone, he's not turning it over. He's making a play, getting it deep, doing the basic things. Of course, he wasn't drafted to be that guy. And if he doesn't right. ever turn into the sniper, it was not a waste of a pick, but he, he doesn't really have a fit here, and we'll see how long he lasts in the lineup. But you're finally seeing through these two games that Wallstrom understands what he has to do in a WAS system, okay. and he's also doing it. Now, it's a learning process. He still has to yes. figure out a few things, but he, he's my hero because finally, with getting a role in an opportunity where we didn't think he was going to make the team, right. you're seeing the growth, the defensive growth that you kind of need to see if he's going to play in that role, which we hadn't seen. So, Johnny, what's your take on a guy like that? First-round pick, expected to be an offensive dynamo in the league, has a trigger of a shot, doesn't work out. Now, this is a guy who, just like Stefan said, weren't even expecting the guy to yeah. make the make the lineup. Now he finds himself in a fourth-line role. I mean, how do you look at that and see somebody who's known for his offense adapt to a fourth-line position? I, I'm so hesitant to, like, compare this to myself. Um, <laughs> no, when I, when I my freshman year at UMass, I played second line, second power play. Uh-huh. And then sophomore year, buried in the fourth line. Like, mm-hmm. had to adjust my game, and I mm-hmm. couldn't do it. Sometimes guys just can't do it. Okay. And maybe Wallstrom is that guy who never played that role in his entire life. Right. You have to think about that again. Like, every team he's probably been on in his life, he's been the guy. And now, like, some guys have, Colby always says this, you have to have a B game. You know, on nights where Braden Point or like Vinny Trocheck, guys like that who, you know, can provide offense aren't, they're still so impactful. Um, you know, he's obviously, again, not like the Barzal or mm-hmm. even a Duclair, um, but he can be like a Palmieri, right? A guy right. who has that physical edge to his game also. And he doesn't really have that FU, that bite in his game that a Palmieri does. Mm-hmm. Um, so if he can find that great, if he can't, it, it might not work out somewhere else because, right. you know, he hasn't been a guy who's proven it on the top six. So, right. Just because it doesn't work out here doesn't mean it's going to work out somewhere else. So if he doesn't adjust here, that could be it, you know. Sure, sure. We'll, we'll see how long the experiment lasts. But, uh, all right, your hero, Oliver Walsh. Some slim pickings this week because yeah. uh, there weren't many heroics for the Islanders as uh, they didn't win a game. But uh, I'm going to go with the guy who had a power play goal and an assist against Utah. That's new guy, Anthony Duclair. Yeah. I think this guy is going to be impactful on this team. There was some question as to whether he's a guy who can fit on a first line. A beauty, too, by the way. Great guy. Great guy. Love to hear that. Mm -hmm. So it looked like he was clicking very well in the early going, particularly in the preseason. He's got his goal in the first game. We'll see how it goes to the next 80. But and this and let's face it, this is a guy this team is going to have to rely on. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, they put up zero goals against Dallas last night. They're going to have to get this first line going. They're they're putting all their eggs into that basket. They're going to force these guys together for as long as possible and see what they can grind out of them production wise, production wise. Right. So goal and assist for him. I think he will be a threat for this team. Maybe he needs a little more time to fit in. I like him on the power play. I think he looks good good there, and hopefully uh, they do better than one for six going forward. Well done. Good Thank job, you so Sam. much. Yeah. So I have one. Yeah, yeah, please, absolutely. Pierre Engvall. 
Tell us go, why. Goal in the AHL. He did. He scored in the BHS. <laughs> okay. He he All scored right. The bar is low. I nice had to seek in a troll. I nice like little it. little redirect. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> so bizarre. I mean, you talk about us not expecting yeah. Wallstrom to make the team. Yeah. One guy we didn't think was getting cut was Pierre Engvall. Mm. And uh, we'll see. We'll see how we that goes. We don't have time to go down For, that From way. a national no, landscape, not. though, there's been like no talk about that, I feel like. I haven't seen any discourse okay. about it outside okay. of Islander fans. All right. Fair enough. All right. Fair enough. All right. So that's going to do it for Hero of the Week, Oliver Wallstrom and Anthony Duclair, and now I'm going to tell you all about Isles Fix. Islanders Country, get your daily fix of Isles news, highlights, and analysis by subscribing to Isles Fix, the only Monday through Friday Islanders new le- newsletter sent directly to your inbox on it for free or become a paid subscriber. For added benefits at islesfix.substack.com. And now we are taking it to the Snake Den. Welcome to the Snake Den. With Jake the Snake Redemption. That's right, folks. It's time for the Snake Den. <laughs> Can't even look at this man. With Jake the Snake Redonis. He looks fantastic. He's calling in on the phone from the couch. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing good. This is definitely interesting calling on the phone like this. Buddy. I feel pretty close to you guys. Yeah, yeah. It's a little strange, but you know what? You're here. You're you're on the line with us. How's that helmet fitting for you, pal? <laughs> Honestly, I probably need a new one. Is that yeah, a, little a little too tight, tight pal? Yeah. A little tight these days, yeah. It's been a while. All right. All right we'll get the screwdriver out after the show. We'll, yeah, we'll get it fixed for you. definitely going to need that. All right. Love the energy here, pal. And 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 much appreciated that you're here while your Mets are playing. Are they still down 8 nothing or whatever it was? <laughs> yeah, it's 3 uh, nothing. But you know what? It's a great time to be a New York sports fan. I mean, these next two days, today and tomorrow, you got the Giants are playing prime time right now. Yeah, how they're they playing do. the Bengals. They're down. <laughs> <laughs> so my, my great time for New York sports. Yeah, <laughs> yeah big time. But, uh, yeah, you got the Mets playing NLCS game one against the Dodgers, also losing. And then tomorrow you get the Yankees ALDS game one against the Guardians. Liberty and won have, today. Yes. 1-1. Yes. One, one, there we go. Yeah. You got a big win today. And then uh, tomorrow night you also got – Jets Bills, primetime football, and LCS game two. So it's a good time. It's an exciting time to be a New York sports fan. And the Islanders and Rangers both play. How could I forget Look that? Look at that. New York sports. What up about Buffalo? Is Buffalo play? Buffalo was playing the Jets. What the, no, I meant, I meant the Sabres. Oh, Sabres? I didn't check. <laughs> Come on, Sorry to all the update fans. <laughs> uh, what inning is it in the Mets game? It was the bottom of the second, I believe. Last no, time bottom time. of the second? Yeah. They don't yeah. the eighth inning anyway, right? Well, the Mets pitcher is walking everyone. So, so I, you know, I was kidding when I said you'll miss the first inning and a half no, before the kidding. show. I guess not. I mean, yeah. baseball, it's, it's a long game. <laughs> it's a long game. <laughs> so, Jake, it's time for you to give us your take, pal. What do you got? Yeah, you know, uh, two tough losses. Um, I was at the home opener. Uh, that game was crazy. It just felt like any time one team punched, they got punched right back. And most of the time, those Islanders getting punched right back. Yeah. Um, once that game went to overtime, I knew it wasn't going to be good. Utah is such a good, young, fast team. I shouldn't say good, but I think they're going to be better this year, better than people expect. Okay. Uh, Dylan Gunther is unbelievable. He's the, been great he, so I think far. he beat the league in goals right now. Um, Clayton Keller, he's always been Still phenomenal. Yesterday. Yeah. And then, I mean, you run into Dallas. You know, it's an experienced team. I'm a firm believer good teams find a way to win. I'm not saying the Islanders are a bad team, but when you're going up against a team that has Stanley Cup aspirations year in and year out, they're going to find a way to win those games, and especially a goalie like Jake Ottinger. He's been great for years. But, um, you know, it's nothing. It's not a fire sale yet. <laughs> uh, but I think the Islanders really need to have a strong week this week and start to find that game. We talk about people playing in the WAS system. It's time to start fully showing that. And you know, bank a couple points this week. Jake, what did you make of the the? I almost called them the Jazz. I'm not even joking. What <laughs> did you make did last night? Is that right? Did, yeah. What did you make yeah. of the Utah Hockey Club's uniforms? Do you like the colors? I like the color scheme. I'm not a fan of the Utah lettering across. Um, to Rangers I'm for you? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. But I mean, I really do like that color scheme. I think yeah. anytime you have like a Carolina blue type color on black and you add white in there, it looks like pretty clean. Um, I'm looking forward to them getting a name next year. I think Clayton Keller might have accidentally leaked mm-hmm. it too. Is that right? Yeah, I heard that maybe the Yeti. Like it's sounding like Yeti. Sounding like Yeti. It's gonna be the Yeti. Yeah, no, I mean, I've always kind of rooted for the Coyotes. They're just a fun team to watch, you know, especially with that situation where they're playing at Muller Arena last year sure. and in front of two thousand, three thousand fans. You kind of root for a team like that. Uh, yeah, like their jerseys. They didn't like the Islanders' performance against them. That's fair. 
but it, it was cool to see, you know, Sipakov get his first NHL goal. Sure. Yeah. Well, Jake, thank you for the phone Thanks, call. Jake. Yeah, you can hang out with Jake. <laughs> and next time I'll bring a microphone, by the way. Yeah, yeah, whatever, whatever works. Yeah, maybe, maybe we'll do it by uh, smoke signals next time. I, I, I don't know. know. I, I, I think is the caller is a winner right every week. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. twice. That's crazy. <laughs> And that's yes. tw- too many times to hear Jake. Yeah. Yeah, well, Jake, guys. great stuff. Fun hanging out in the snake den. <laughs> We're going to move hang on. Up the phone. <laughs> <laughs> hang up the phone. Hang up. All right. That was the snake den featuring Jake the Snake Radonis. And now we move on to Questions Brewing. It's time for Questions Brewing. So go ahead. Ask us a question. That's right, folks. It's time for Questions Brewing, the part of the show where you get to ask us. Some questions good. wow so ed and jay how we doing boys doing great i mean yeah. how, how about that by the way how about what that phone i think it's a it's a must <laughs> it's a great phone it's call. a must it was a perfect call you can see the helmet mark on jake's phone. <laughs> yeah. oh yeah that was <laughs> wow. it was like, yeah it was really like he was just played tight. 20 minutes as a bottom six forward <laughs> how's uh how's gabby doing back there she's hanging out with us tonight yeah social media manager there we go all right so boys how's the chat doing uh, we're we're busy. I mean, you know, okay. we're a little uh, we're a little uptight tonight. Oh would, well, yeah, think. it's been a rough. Tell week. me why. But you know, I'm not really because I had the Islanders uh, winning winning the uh, regular season eighty one and one. So this is a great <laughs> it's a great start for me. <laughs> right my, on target my, for you. I put my car on it, so we, we'll see how that works. Wow. Out. Problem. Yeah. Okay. Uh, right. First up from Golf Man management. over on YouTube. Okay. Is it crazy? Is it a crazy take that I'm happier with how they played against Dallas than Utah? Their structure seems so much better in Dallas, but they just couldn't finish. It's it's the right take. Yeah. They were much better take. against Dallas. They just didn't execute and score. But like we talked about, the positives, they played a, against a really strong Dallas team. I think after Dallas scored, they didn't allow a shot on goal for like six minutes after that. They had their chances. Like we said, they could have won that game. Utah, they looked completely chaotic in their own zone. Mm-hmm. Structure was all off. But against Dallas... Again, they were supporting on the breakouts. The forwards were helping out. So I think they played a much better game against Dallas. Fortunately, the result was no points. Utah was one point. But if you play like that, and it's a cliche, but Wa said it a lot, if you play like that, you're going to win more games than you yeah. lose. And, and he's not wrong. Johnny, do you have anything to add there? Um, you don't I, have to. I, I, didn't watch, I didn't watch any of the Dallas game. I just watched that 10-minute recap, so I can't like really speak to That's it. That's fine. But what I will so. say is that Look at, look at Edmonton start last year. Right. Like the first 10 games, it's all really about just figuring your, figuring your team out. You know, like the first 10 games is really just more about you than it is about the opponent. And a lot of coaches have said that actually too. So it's like my own original thought, but it's it's so true as last year. Um, so if I was Downer fans right now, I, I would not be freaking out at all. Breathe. It's two games. Ed, what do you got? <laughs> Troy Noak asks, what are your honest thoughts of CBJ, Columbus Blue Jackets, this season? Well, it's tough. Obviously, they're dealing with yeah, the worst I mean, possible thing you could ever think of. On top of that, their captain, who has been pretty much a rock helping this team through that in Boone Jenner, he's out until like March. So that's another issue. They're losing guys. They have a lot of young talent. We see what they could do. They, they, they're going to win some games this year. But yeah, it's a tough, it's really tough. It's really hard to focus on hockey when talking about them just because of what happened. But, you know, they're a team that hopefully they find not to rally, but. Remember Goudreau this year. Make it about the team and about having each other's backs. I know in the locker room they're they're doing something for Johnny after each game. I forgot exactly what they're doing, but having a jersey hung up in his stall every night. Right. So yeah. this is on gonna, the road too. Right. And I think um, I forgot what they're doing, but they're giving the player the game. But it's something that Johnny used to do. That they're giving out. Donkey. Yeah, yeah. 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 The donkey. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So I think this season is obviously not much about results because no one expects them to be good. Right. And they beat Colorado in Colorado right, last right. night. They're not a walk in the park. But know? it's more about just. Fans having the team to fall back on when they're going through this and also the players having the fans. So I think uh, you don't want to talk too much about how they're going to do because you don't feel like it's, it's right. Mm. And I just think this seems about seeing a community and a team come together. Community is the word right there. Mm. This is a community season for the Columbus Blue Jackets and just rallying around each other and, and the friends and family of the Goudreau family and, and um, just getting through a really tough time for sure. Yeah. Also, like, you know, there are things to be excited about. Adam Fantilli, Kent Johnson, right, yeah. Gavin right. Brindley, like some young guys that can really take a next step in growth. Like, there are still three guys that you look at that are going to be really fun to watch. I mean, if you're looking Cylinder. for... Cylinder? Yeah, Cylinder's another one. Um, you know, so there are some positives and upsides for Columbus. I'm personally excited to watch those guys play. Ken Johnson, not to bring up the Islanders, had the sickest goal of the year last yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. Through the legs, Michigan. Oh, right. Gross. Um, <laughs> didn't curse. Didn't curse. Almost dropped it. Uh, but yeah, Columbus is going to have some some fun games as well. There you go. Next up from Golf Ops. How many another more... Another golf g- guy. Yeah, okay. another, we got two golf Hockey guys. Guy. No, no, no sure. Phil Jewell. On two different platforms. <laughs> Uh, how many more games before the third line is shot into the sun? 
<laughs> well, scientifically a lot, because I don't think that's possible. But uh, that's Pat Joe Holmstrom. Play along, Lee. Yeah. Yeah, I think that was probably the biggest concern I had entering the season was that line. You thought Holmstrom being there has the skating ability to get up the ice, so that confidence in his shot, but it's a slow line. I mean, it is, and I think the Islanders want, you know, Wild wants every line to be aggressive. I, I think they're going to have, they're going to get a leash because I don't know what else you're changing. You know, they're not going to move Holmstrom off that line. I think they want him in Peugeot. Mm. Put your hand down, I'll get to you in a second. <laughs> uh, student, I don't know what you're doing. But uh, um, yeah, I'm concerned about it, but I, I don't think there's a, yeah, let's just recall Engvall up and put him in there. They don't have the cap space for that. So I think mm. that line's going to get a lot of legroom. Peugeot and Lee last year with Engvall, that was a really strong line. I think it needs more time, but I don't think they're the issue right now at all. Laz? I was just going to say, why not bump McLean up, keep Holmstrom up there, make it a little bit faster, and take Anders Lee down? They could do that. It's not like Lee's been producing I mean, so they could much. also put Peugeot down there, too. Yeah. They don't need it. That's a good point. And McLean could play the middle? Yeah. Who, he played middle? He's been playing the middle on the fourth line, so... If things continue the way they do, I am curious how how quickly Waz is going to put things into a blender. And just, I don't think and he won't. That's happens. the thing. He I, doesn't. No coach does, doesn't, but yeah. I really think that he believes like this lineup, especially with Siplikov on the second line, this is going to line up that's mm, either going to yeah. work or this not going to work. Is, is Lee on the first power play unit? No. He's he not. used to be. Now he's right. on the second. So. Mm, Siplikov okay. took Sipikov his spot. Took a spot. I was going to say, because Lee can play fourth, fourth line minutes if he's still getting that power play time, so he can produce a little bit. But if yeah. he's not getting first unit time, yeah. I don't know. Ed. Uh, a lot of Wallstrom questions tonight, so I'll okay. go with this one from Isle72. Is Wallstrom safe for now um, just because his expectations are just of a fourth liner? I don't I don't think he's... Well, I don't think a lot of these fringe guys are safe. I, I wouldn't be shocked to see Godier come into the lineup on this, you know, before the end of the road trip. Sure. It also depends how Wallstrom plays and other guys, but... You know, I think this is Wallstrom's last chance. Hey, you made the team. You had a really, really... Oh, we say it every year. He's yeah. your he's your caco. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I think, you know, he had a really bad start to training camp, and then he had a really great finish. And I think the Islanders are, you know, confidence is a big thing with him. Giving him that runway in the fourth line. If this was the fourth line of the last couple of years, he wouldn't fit there because right. that line was not... Offense wasn't the job. And I think the whole point is... We got Wallstrom, who who is not Clutterbuck physically, but like Clutterbuck, has a wicked release. If he just gets up the ice with those guys, they can make some magic happen. But I think this is his last chance to really prove, hey, you're not going to get the top, top six minutes to produce. Bring that physicality and show off that shot when you can. And we haven't seen the shot yet. He's brought the physicality, but yeah, I don't think he's safe. I think by next game or the game after, he could be out of it and that could be it. But every year we say that. I think Wall understands that this is kind of a fish out of water right. circumstance for Oliver Wallstrom. So maybe he does have a little more leash because of that. But listen, if the, if the losses continue to mount and mistakes are still right. made on that line, then that's probably when we'll see a shift. Uh, next up from Enzeb. Thoughts on the giant lighthouse? Love it. I love it too. Love it. Didn't know it was coming. No uh, one did, I don't think. Yeah, yeah. yeah it just kind of appeared. <laughs> I want to see it in person. It's, it looks uh, pretty awesome. It's like yeah. 13 feet tall. And they have someone like that lights it up before the game? Josh or? Bailey did it. You know the Hurricanes do the... Yeah. I think that's what they're going to do. Does sound come out of it? Um, or they just light it. I think it just lights up. I don't I think, think they sound. just light it. But it lights yeah. up when they score. They actually oh, tried. Remember they tried the uh, the Carolina siren and it failed miserably. Everybody hated it. Remember John? Yeah, Tinelli? Right? yeah, yeah. Oh right, right. Yeah, when yeah. they first opened the building and right. everybody oh, hated heard, it. I do remember that. Yeah, yeah. That that uh, that failed. The but uh, cool. the lighthouse is cool. I think it's I think it's really cool. Yeah, I, I think it's it, great what they've done with that building. It's just all it's, it's like a palace, Islander. Man. It's just an Islander home. Like it really is. I think it'd be really cool as if the lighthouse, the light part of the house, that makes it a lighthouse. Went on the player that scored. You know the spotlight goes uh, on the player? Hey, it, hey, they suggestion that, box. Wow. Drop like it that. in there, Let me pal. just call the deck like real that. quick. Nice. But I think that'd be cool, like the brilliant. lighthouse. I like it. Idea. Like, turn yeah. the lights off that's and just really have that idea. follow them. Right. That'd yeah. be pretty yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> Next up from CGS, when is Sorokin going to show up and save this dismal season? <laughs> it's already a dismal well, season. Two games in, it's all over. It's over. I think he gets a game on this road trip. I He's do think to. for the storyline that Varlamov gets Colorado being back with Wah, but I could see Sorokin starting see. tomorrow. I had asked Wah on Friday. He gave an interesting answer saying he had to talk to Lou and the trainer about it. Um, not sure why he has to talk to Lou about it because it's not like Sorokin has to be recalled from a conditioning stint or anything. Right. It's just starting him, but, you know, Consultation, it's Consultation, you know. He is, he is a full go. He's a full, 100% healthy. Yeah. It's just about, 100, yeah. like, um, Swayman, 100% game ready. They don't, the biggest thing is they don't want to put him in too soon when they have Varlamov. If they didn't yeah. have Varlamov, I think Sorokin plays game two and you sure. just give him a dip. Yeah, if it was Hogberg. But again, yeah. it doesn't mean that he comes in and they win the game. You know, he's going to need right. some time. 
Yeah, that's another thing, too. It doesn't mean he's going to show up against the Avs tomorrow and stand on his head and pitch a shutout. You know, yeah. he might need a couple of games to get back in the groove here. I think, he, I think get, he deserves a little leeway here, after, especially coming out of an injury. And he, he didn't get any preseason games. We talked to him about right. it. He said there's nothing I could do about it. But you know for a fact, especially when, you know, a back's injury, a lot of the work he said he did was video. But nothing, I mean, you could practice. Preseason yeah, that's doesn't only matter. Help so much. Exactly. So um, I think people should... Take a breather. Once Sorokin gets in, don't be shocked if a soft go goes in. Yeah. I mean, we don't want to see it like we saw it last year because it was unacceptable to his standards and right. you're paying him a lot of money. But it's going to take him a, a, a couple of games. To, he said the biggest thing is timing. And you need games to do that. So I think he gets into a game. I but, wouldn't throw him in against Colorado. No, no. <laughs> I would not do that. <laughs> I think Montreal yeah. or St. Louis is probably yeah. the better option for him. Sure. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Next up from Trottier19, who also added, I am going to lose my car in that bet. <laughs> is that bad? Uh, <laughs> is anyone surprised by the first two results? Anyone? Bueller? A blown <laughs> third period the lead uh, and then can't finish. Just like the last season, because it's the very same team as the last season, except for Duclair and Max. Well, then you can't say it's the same Who the right? book is out on, very disappointing. Clearly, Trottier wasn't surprised, and that <laughs> doesn't surprise me either. But, yeah, I mean, I, I came into game one with good vibes, man. I, I thought this is a team that was going to take care of Utah at home. I did. And they almost did, save for, what, two minutes, whatever almost it was. Almost only, only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. <laughs> wow. <laughs> almost? Only counts and horseshoes, the game horseshoes and you, hand grenades. You love cliches. Dad? My, my dad is the one that told me that. Like, he's listening <laughs> yeah, right he's now. He's a big dad so, joke yeah. guy. That's, Isn't it more like sure. close? What? Close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. That's what I thought. That's not the expression. Yeah. You're wrong. I thought that was the expression. Well, what does it's it not. have to do All right, with so, so, so get into almost, the, uh, almost what, to the question. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I'm leaving. I was a little surprised <laughs> because I thought that they were going to be a little better prepared yep. out of the gate. We bought into the hype of the bag skates during training camp. They were going to be ready to go. And, and to their credit, they did come out well against Utah, and then they fell into some bad habits later on. And, and Utah's also really better than habits. we expected. Yeah. And I don't, but I also don't think that the way they gave up those leads in the third against Utah is an indication that we're going to get same old odds right. for the rest of the year. And this is, and this is going to be another team that's, uh, as, as some like some people like to say, loser point merchants and that whole thing and giving <laughs> I up love leads. The merchant stuff. I think it's so funny. <laughs> and so giving up these, you know, third period leads. I, I do think ultimately it's going to be maybe not, not necessarily a full thing of the past, but I don't think it's going to be at the extent that it was last year. I think they're going to clean that up. Just a bad weight, bad impression to give yeah, your fans not, in game one of the season. That's for yeah, sure. They say talk is cheap, right? Yes. Yeah. So yes. I got that expression, right? Yeah, that was nice good. job, bud. <laughs> it is close. What's good for the goose is good for the gander, right, yeah. Stefan? It's anyway. not almost. <laughs> my dad's been telling me a lie my whole entire life with that expression. It's not almost. I'm telling it's you. Not it's close. Almost. Yeah. almost, though, Stefan. Uh, so next up from DTMR, when does Brock Tober start? It's a great question. Uh, the Islanders need him to score. He could have. It could have happened last night. Mm -hmm. um, I think everyone thought he was going to score last night when the puck's behind Ottinger, and all he has to do is touch he, it. He made the pass to Sipikov. He no. did, and that, that was, was a, that was a nice and was Sipikov, a great shot. Yeah. Um, I guess they don't really need Rocktober to start with goals. Of course, they would love that. But I think <laughs> if he assists, for example, if they win that game against Utah and don't blow it, he's got the primary assist, a great play uh -huh. to open up some space for Sipikov to read that play. And mm -hmm. you say Rocktober started that night because he sets it up. And he's also, by the way. I'll take points. Doesn't have to be goals. Also, Nelson's been knocked, uh, gets knocked for his defensive play. These first two games, when I look up, he's making plays in the D zone the entire time. He's getting back and making those heads up plays. So, yeah, I think Brocktober has started. It is October. I think he'll score on this road trip for sure. Okay. Mm. Next up from T. Boyle. I'm hearing rumors oh of boy. Dobson not signing with the Islanders. Is this garbage or is it true? Well, he's an RFA, so he doesn't really have a choice. Right. I mean, <laughs> he's not in a position of, of power to make that call, and that's not going to do him any good unless, unless they're just so far away on numbers, which they won't be. He's going to earn his contract. So... T Boyle, I would say. Get off uh, Facebook, T Boyle. I, I come would, on. <laughs> I would say uh, they're probably they'll they'll work out a deal one way or another. Mm. Next up from Nzab09, are guys pressing to get off to a good start and making mistakes in the in the wake of that? Thousand percent can be the reason. Yeah, I think talked about the mental game before. You talked to all the players during training camp and about the back skates, and they're huffing and puffing before they talk to us, saying we're doing this because we know on back to backs on third periods. Mm. Again, talk is cheap, but they said this is going to help us short-term and long-term, not do what we did last year. Now, the first game, it wasn't great, but you look at the second game, we talked about the growth. The PK is not going to be as bad as they were in the first game. They just showed against an elite power play in Dallas. Two power plays against, no goals against, three shots total. 
so you're seeing growth in there, and also they didn't blow, they didn't have a third period lead. You can't blow one if you don't have one. But I, I, I do it's think, true. I do think they, a lot of them are. There's a lot of pressure on them to not be the team last year. And we said when you're thinking about not making mistakes, mm. you make mistakes. But the mistakes have been so f- few and far between. But it's just every mistake's ending up in the they're back of the net, so they're loud magnified. Mistakes. Loud, yeah. yeah. Next up, uh, we got another one from Isle Seventy Two. I'm very worried about Dobson's defensive game. Mm-hmm. Are we going to give a big contract to a guy that looks more like a Keith Yandel? than an Adam Fox. Well, I think the thing here is you're going to pay him to be the offensive guy, not the defensive guy, but you need to see him be sound enough defensively to where he's playing 20 minutes a game and there's trust. I think Wad does trust him, and we saw the point production, but there should be concern. You don't want to give a guy $9 million a year. You think he's 9 No, I think he's 8 by 8 I think that's where they're going to go. Um, but he could look at other contracts and say, hey. I, I give him had- 5 Yeah, but if you're going to pay okay. him that much money, you can commit long term to him. He, he's got to be sound. He doesn't have to be amazing defensively. He just has to be sound defensively. And right now we're seeing mistakes that he made his freshman year, his second season, third season, where you, you need to see him make that jump because once he gets paid, you're paying for that player. And if he hasn't proven defensively, you know, not going to be that top defense guy that you need him to be, it's kind of tough to give a guy eight, eight and a half, nine million to be on a top pairing, yeah. but be the reason you lose games. I'm not blaming Dobson for why they lost game one. It's not his fault. Three, what did you say before? The show, yeah. if a goal goes in, it's how many? Three mistakes? mistakes lead to a goal. Three mistakes. So I'm not blaming him at all, but they need him to not be on the, those things can't be happening as much at the rate they've happened the first couple of games when he's on the ice. He's got to be a little better if you're going to pay him that kind of money. My concern real quick on Dobson is just when, like what's the, th- the threshold between now and when we're at the point where it's like, this is who Noah Dobson right. is, right? Yeah. Like that's what we're still trying to find out. Like is, is there still development and growth for this guy? Is he, does he still have a window? He's still young. So does he still he's, have a he's, window? He's what, 24? 24, 24, 24, 23, 24. So, you know, I would say for a defenseman, he's still got time to find that right, part of his game. Of but the clock is ticking. And we're still seeing a lot of mistakes that we've seen previously. So the question is, is this a guy, not only does he have the ability to just literally have the ability to learn from these mistakes, this just might be the player that he is. And you have to take the warts with the offensive production. I mean, everybody loves a 70, 80 point defenseman. Yeah. They don't grow on trees, right? And they may just have to, kind of try their best to, you know, kind of supplement uh, the defensive game if, if he can't pick it up. I mean, Laz knows. Laz played with Makar, yeah. right? So I mean, No one compares to him. No, but this is a guy that's an offensive machine, but he's yeah. so good defensively where if you're going to give so much money to a guy, like you know every night, like you said before too, with Point or Trocek, mm-hmm. if they're not producing offensively, yeah. Makar's a shutdown top pairing defenseman. Mm-hmm. The Islanders hope Dobbs, again, he's not going to be the guy that Makar is. Makar's a ridiculous skater, yeah. brings those yeah, yeah. elements that Dobson doesn't, but... A guy that could point produce offensively, you just hope he could be, doesn't have to be an all-star defensively, but good enough where you trust him to be on the ice in big situations. For me, it's just like winning battles with him. Right. I think back to the biggest Noah Dobson question I had. I think it was him, so if I'm wrong, please correct me. That Jordan Martin, a goal last year in the playoffs, Martin knocks him off the puck, wraps the puck in, I think like seven seconds after Carolina scored right, yeah, in yeah. one of those mm-hmm. games. Pretty sure it was Dobson that got knocked off the puck way too right, easily right, yes, for a number yeah, one guy. Yeah, he went behind the net and missed, yeah, yeah. Like way too easily for a number one guy. That cannot happen. Like Dobson has to be just a little bit meaner and grip his stick a little bit tighter and not lose battles as easily as a top defenseman in the NHL does. And I think while you said how aggressive he wants them to be, how hard he wants to be, yeah. he's also talked about support so much. If Dobson's going to make a read, someone's got to cover the three mistakes thing on goals but yeah Dobson this is a kind of great he's really fun to watch I, yeah. I like his game a lot yeah and I think again doesn't have to be amazing defensively just has to be solid Ed let's go one more yeah uh this just in from Tom Boyle when is the next viewing party hey great question That's a great question yeah, to end we on were, here. you know what I was supposed to talk about that on what's on tap so let me go through <laughs> oh, my no. cards and bring that up that. uh two <laughs> viewing parties coming up at center station Sunday November 3rd the Islanders will be in the garden playing the Rangers so we're going to be at center station having a pregame show watching the Islanders play the strangers that is a 1 p.m. start We'll get the pregame going probably around 11, 30, 12 o'clock. We'll, we'll figure it out, but we will be there. It's going to be a good time. And then on Saturday, November 16th, Seattle. They will be on the West Coast playing the Kraken. That's a 4 p.m. game. Pre-game show, the whole nine. We'll have raffles, prizes, lots of fun. Same old gig there over at good old Center Station in Rockville Center. So there you go, T-Boyle. Time, so for, the, time for the prize? Oh, yeah, absolutely. We're giving away a jersey. We told you all, so let me get to my card again, too. (laughs) Uh, Stalling, stalling. All right, here we go. It is time to award the New York Islanders jersey. So, Ed, take it away. Let's spin it. Spin it up, bud. We are spinning. Click to spin. Okay. 
Are we spinning? Okay, here we go. We're off. It is actually spinning. Okay, that's good. And <laughs> that's, it is going working. to land on. What do we got? It's too small to read. It's going to pop up. Kendra uh, 160, 160 uh, on, I believe this is Twitter. Oh, I got it, buddy. YouTube. Kendra, you got yes, it? Oh, it's this YouTube. Is all YouTube. This is all YouTube comments. So Kendra 160, congratulations. You have won the New York Islanders jersey. So what we're going to do, we're going to reply to the comment that you left on YouTube with instructions on how you can claim your jersey. But we had a great response to this. I want to thank everybody for chiming in. We will have more giveaways throughout the season. That is the first to go. So congratulations on your New York Islanders jersey. We will send it to you soon. Thank you for the participation. Congratulations, Kendra. Yes, congratulations. And now, before we wrap, once again, just want to tell you all about our brand new Patreon launch. Check us out at patreon.com slash hockey night NY exclusive content featuring Q and A's columns, videos behind the scenes, merch and partner discounts, and even an invitation to hang with us here at Floored media in Rockville center. So you can see us clown around during the show here on Sunday yeah, nights. Never do that. No, not at all. But no. uh, yes, uh, we just started up. It's a great way to support the show. So please check it out. Please get involved if you can. We appreciate the support. We're going to have a lot of exclusive content. there. are going to have a lot of fun. We actually uh, recorded some earlier today and we'll have that churning out for you guys soon. So definitely check us out at patreon.com slash hockey night NY. And we'll also be having a newsletter over at hockey night NY.com as well to keep you posted on what we do here at hockey night New York, whether it's the show, the article, the columns, the Patreon, all that stuff. So get involved. Check it out. We already talked about the live events, so now we can wrap. All right, folks, want to send a big thanks to our pal Johnny Lazarus here for joining us, not only on the show, but in studio. Thanks a lot for coming down, man. Great, great stuff. You can check him out at Daily Faceoff. Where else are you at, buddy? Morning Cup uh, of Hockey. Morning Cup of Hockey on Daily Faceoff every Monday to Thursday, 9 a.m. Stefan came on last week, absolutely crushed it. Thank you. Actually have something coming out with an Islander player. I don't oh. know when, but uh, Bleach Report, I do those uh, open skates with a lot of the players, and I did one with the Islanders. So oh, right on. Be on the lookout for that. I don't know when it's going to drop, but that was a lot of fun. All right, be on the lookout for that, Islander fans. Want to send a big thanks to our sponsors, starting with Main Street Board Game Cafe, located at 307 Main Street in Huntington Village. Find out how to unplug your game at mainstboardgamecafe.com. Also, big thanks to Center Station Bar and Grill. Head on down to 279A Sunrise Highway for Isles Games, live music, karaoke, comedy shows, and more. And a big thanks to Razor and Kniff Attorneys at Law. Nobody likes going to court, but if you have to, call 212-LAW-1500 for a free consultation of folks don't forget to check us out on all platforms twitch youtube apple podcast spotify rate review and subscribe that helps us out a big amount stefan rosner where can everybody find you yes on twitter or x whatever the kids call it stefan underscore rosner the hockey news and it's all that common i want to tell you quickly about my new project yeah the young monitors it is a sub stack five dollars a month 50 for the year daily newsletters with exclusive content every day game previews film breakdowns and much more head to the elmonters.com the elmonters.com you can follow me on twitter at shawnee hockey you can follow the show at Hockey Night NY on all social media platforms, all streaming platforms, on your favorite podcast providers, all that great stuff. For Stefan Rosner, for Johnny Lazarus, for Edzo, for Jay, for Jake, for Gabby, for the whole Hockey Night in New York crew. We've had a great time with you tonight. Thank you so much for checking us out. We'll see you next week. 